Yeah, and I feel yeah. like these challenges are also this seat for transformation in so, so many ways. Like, I'm not the same person I was before I got sick. You know, it does sometimes, as I look back, still feel like a dream. Hey guys, I've got a really amazing video for you today. I'm here with Vanessa. She's over in Toronto in Canada, another fellow Canadian. Yay! I'm always so excited to have uh, Canadians on the channel. Excited to have everybody, oh, but I love my Canadians. Uh, so Vanessa, like pretty much everyone who comes on my channel, uh, has had unfortunately a really long, hard journey with her health. She was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, with POTS, with such a long list that I'll let her explain a little bit more, but most recently even long COVID. So she has been through a really tough time, but thankfully, like so many of us, has learned so much through this journey and has found what she has needed to fully get past this. So stick around to the end. She's got really great insights. She now works to support other people as well to help them on their healing journeys. Like so many of us just get really passionate about this kind of work once we fully get past it. So Vanessa, I'm really excited to talk with you today. Thank you for doing this. Yes, I'm so pumped to be here. And um, I know this has been like, this is a fan moment for me and a, kind of a, a moment in my healing journey that I aspired to get to when I was healing and visualizing and doing the brain retraining, I actually had this interview as one of my visualizations. And um, I just kept seeing myself being interviewed by you on YouTube and having this story, this testimony of healing. And, um, and it kept me going. And it's crazy because when you reached out to me, um, you know, a few months ago, I was like, we made it. <laughs> this is it. It it happened, and uh, I'm just so grateful to be here, and I'm so happy that um, that I can share my story with you all. That is so incredible. You did it. You did the work. You manifested it. You did all, everything you needed to do, and um, I'm just so excited to yeah to be able to help share your story. Um, just before we dive in, I just want to send out a thank you and a shout out to Jill Lamont. She, Thank you, Jill, if you're watching, for joining and becoming a channel member. It's a new feature on the channel. If you'd like to join for $3, you can support these interviews, help keep this all going. There's a little button right before the video. And Jill's also a real estate specialist. If you're looking for one, let her know in the comments. Uh, maybe she can help you out. Let's support one another. <laughs> so, Vanessa, oh my goodness, such a journey you've been on. Where, where, where to start? <laughs> Yeah, where to start? So my my journey started in 2009 um, when I contracted a parasite, a deadly parasite in Vietnam. So I was a federal officer and one of my functions was to air marshal people out of the country. And so I was fit, strong, you know, courageous, brave, um, probably had a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms, but lo and behold, I ended up contracting this parasite. And I didn't know I had it. And I just started developing all these crazy symptoms. And it took them about nine months to discover what it was. And it had like a 70% death rate. And, um, you know, that was a perfect storm for me. I had just moved into a house. I was working a really, really intense job. I um, was get. I just had just gotten engaged and was planning my wedding. So you can just imagine, you know, the load of stress that I was carrying on top of this. Um, I had to do chemotherapy to eradicate it, and it was right before my wedding, and so I was very unwell on my wedding day. And honestly, I, I know that it affected it affected me in multiple ways, especially from a neurological perspective, but also um, from a breathing perspective and digestive. So it was just all over, and um, that's where things started to snowball. And for the next, I don't know, eight years nine years, I just continually got sicker and was collecting more diagnoses and labels. And so throughout those years, I, you know, developed chronic migraine, daily, chronic daily migraine, um, CFS, um, malabsorption, um, IBS. Uh, I had small fiber neuropathy, uh, hot syndrome, um, incredibly annoying vestibular stuff for eight years. I had to use a cane. There are times where I had a, a wheelchair. There are times where I was completely bedridden. 
And all during this time, I ended up having two incredibly beautiful kids. And um, it was hard. Like being pregnant with chronic illness was very difficult, especially when you didn't have the tools for it. But thankfully, I have an amazing supportive family and it took a village and like literally the village stepped in and took over because I just couldn't do what typical moms need to do for their kids. And so it was really, really hard to go through that. And just for the kids to see, you know, what they see, what they saw, what I went through. Um, and it all really peaked in uh, 2017 and 18, where I had, you know, month long hospital stays. And um, it was to a point where I could not even sit up without losing consciousness. And uh, the doctors had no clue what was wrong with me. I had the typical POTS and symptoms, but. Um, in Canada, they had no clue what it was. And I just remember being in a hospital bed. I could not eat. I had gastroparesis. Um, I could not do anything for myself, essentially. And I had to have round-the-clock care um, for everything. And I was so unwell that uh, we had to call. My dad was on vacation in Greece, and we had to call him to come back uh, because my... My, my mom, my husband were convinced that I wouldn't make it any longer. So my husband was planning that funeral in his head already and wondering how he would tell my children, our children, um, you know, about me and what was happening. And so it was a really difficult time. And, um, you know, I, I was diagnosed with POTS at that point. And, um, you know, it was all through <laughs> my neurologist went on the internet and found a doctor in the US and then found it through that way. Like, he's like, I think I know what you have, but we have no one in Canada who treats it and we don't know what to do, but let's just try and manage, you know, your heart rate. Let's try and manage your digestive. Let's try and do this. So I was put on 12 different medications um, and, and, you know, just to try and manage symptoms, but I was very, very unwell. But it was in that hospital bed, I remember Googling myself and going on the internet and just looking up these symptoms and this word POTS. And Sarah Jackson came up and she had this YouTube channel and she started talking about how she recovered. And I was like, no way, right? Like this is snake oil. Like there is no way. I am so sick. I can't, I can't even lift my head. This is impossible but a seed plant was planted that day. And so fast forward six months down the road and um, I had moved in with my parents. They took full, you know, uh, care of my children and my husband was working to pay the bills because you guys know how it is when you're, when you can't work, <laughs> you have a mortgage. And, um, you know, I was, I was just hopeless and, um, and suicidal. I was done. Like anybody who's watching knows just that waking up with dread every day and just the pure torture that it feels like. And my parents begged me to come to church. And so I wasn't a faithful, very faithful person, but they carried me, physically carried me to the church and they asked our local parish priest to pray over me. And so they laid me on the altar and he, um, I'm Greek Orthodox, so he put his like sash over my head and he started to do a prayer. And in that moment, my mom's crying, my dad's crying, even the priest who'd never met me before was just so overwhelmed with emotion. And, and these people were genuinely praying for me. And I felt something. I couldn't explain it, but I felt something. And it was this glimmer of hope and strength to keep going. And so I always say that was this pivotal moment where my darkness was you know, exposed by a pink, a pinhole of light, you know, and, and, and things started to change. And so I started to develop my faith. And at that exact time, DNRS surfaced and it just popped up on like my Facebook page. And so I had to ask God, I'm like, God, you know, I know you want me well, like, I know, I know you love me and just show me how to do this. And that's where I discovered DNRS. And um, for those of you who don't know it, it's the dynamic neural retraining system. And it is a, basically a way to rewire your brain 
and heal from many, many chronic symptoms. And so I started that. And that was the beginning of my healing journey. I started to heal. I started to rewire my brain. I started to improve. And um, and yeah, and then, you know, along the way, I don't know how far in the future you want me to go with this because DNRS wasn't the only thing I did, but it started that journey for me. And I'm so grateful for that. I feel like we all just need to take a moment right now. People watching myself, this is... You know, every story I hear moves me, but I've just had goosebumps and just been like feeling this in every cell of my body, the nightmare that you've been through and the the pain and for your children and for your family. Oh my goodness, Vanessa, what you have been through. I just, I just want to take a moment just to acknowledge how heavy that is and how intense that is and how significant that is. It's so much that you just summarized and, you know, we're sitting here and we're smiling and it all feels like it, it wasn't really, it couldn't have been that, how bad could it be? Look at you now. Um, but what a nightmare. I'm yeah. so sorry that you had to go through all of that. Thank you. And, you know, it does sometimes as I look back, still feel like a dream, you know, and um, yeah, it was, it was hard. It was so hard. And I don't know if I could have done it had I not had some connection to faith and to have this incredible support system with me. And as I healed, I got, you know, better and I started to notice symptoms subsiding and, you know, uncoupling fear. Um, then I had some trauma surface. And so many of us know that a lot of us, we do the brain rewiring and then down the journey, you know, some old trauma surfaces and, and it's time to deal with it. And so I went into somatic experiencing and um, I went and did a lot of belief work and tapping um, and really just wanted to work through those unconscious belief systems that were also keeping me so stuck. And, you know, I did inner child work and, you know, just, I really just had to kind of piece together the things that I felt I needed because at the time there wasn't this all-inclusive program like there is now um, where some of the programs have all of these together. Um, and so I got a lot better. I had a drive and passion to help others. I started coaching and I just fell into it. Honestly, people just started asking me, hey, can you, can you coach me? Can you help me? And um, it just felt so natural. For the first time in my life, I felt like I belonged and that this was, you know, this was who I was, you know, like who I felt most like myself doing this work. Let's put it that way. And, um, you know, my parent, my kids got my, gotten their mom back, you know, my husband got his wife back and, and it was such an amazing homecoming. And, um, and then, you know, life happened again. And um, this was another perfect storm and probably the biggest storm of my life. In uh, 2021, um, December, we contracted COVID like many others. Um, it was the Delta variant and it was really intense. And so at that time I was really well, you know, moved into a new house, really regulated and just at the high, like another high of my life, just so grateful. And, um, and yeah, we, we got the virus and my father passed within two weeks. And um, I was also in the hospital as well for um, just in and out six times. And um, it was just such an incredibly difficult experience. And I had experienced grief before, but not a parent. You know, I had like aunts, uncles, grandparents. Um, and funny enough, I studied bereavement and I'm a bereavement educator. Um, and it was something that I had wanted to do, you know, in the future. And I never thought I would need it for myself. Like I never thought that I would be living the stories I had heard. And I lost my, my dad, who was one of the closest people to me in my life. Like I'm a daddy's girl through and through. And, you know, he held my hand, um, in every hospital bed, he took me to every appointment. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his constant daily encouragement. And um, and so we suddenly lost him in a very intense and tragic way. And then I suddenly had long COVID, you know, the pericarditis and CFS symptoms. And 
and I felt like I'd crawled right back into that hole for a time. And I was angry at God and I was confused. And because, you know, we still had restrictions and lockdowns, we weren't even able to do a proper funeral for him. We had no support. It was just a really hard time. And so I kind of pulled back and I reached out for support because I needed it. And I found an incredible therapist who's also a somatic therapist. And um, I started to tend to my parts more than ever before with compassion, with such a deep compassion. And I started to talk to God so raw and real, like with exactly what I was feeling because I was angry, I was upset and I was hurting. And I started to work on my nervous system again in a different way. We can't brain or train grief um, but we can do things to support our nervous systems as we go through it. And so as I started to support my nervous system and, you know, just do more practices that I felt I needed, um, I started to heal from the long COVID as well. I started to incrementally train with movement. I started to incrementally train with grief. Like emotions are so intense, right? So it's like I had to slowly allow these emotions in and then signal safety to myself. And so that's what it's been like uh, for the past you know, year and a half. And um, thankfully I recovered quite quickly from the long COVID stuff. I was able to get off any medication I was on. And we just, the summer went to Greece on this incredible trip and we honored my dad in so many ways. And you know, I find that I'm, I'm still healing. I feel like, you know, this is a lifelong process in, in many ways. But I just wanted to kind of give a message of encouragement that I know life happens on the other side. Like, yes, chronic illness is just such a, a bad dream, I can call it. You know, it's just so hard to go through. Um, but a lot of people are selling the story that like life never happens. Like nothing bad ever happens. On you. Once you're healed, you're good. Yeah. And um, and that story isn't necessarily true. If you're a citizen of this world, living, breathing, and you know, you know the reality that we live in is that life happens, things happen. But the difference now is that we know how to move with them. We know how to support ourselves through them. I am more resourced than ever, and I don't think. If this had happened years ago, I would have been in a very different place right now. But I'm so grateful that I had my resources, that I knew how to tend to myself and support myself and reach out for help when I needed it. And that made the world of difference for me. And so that's that encouragement is like, after you've been through this journey, whatever life throws at you after you have this inner knowing that you're, you're going to be okay and that's that's just i hope that you find that encouraging um to you you know as life happens because it it does you're going to be okay yeah absolutely it does that's a really important message something that we need to talk about more and vanessa i am so sorry about the loss of your dad that is so heartbreaking i'm just ah, sending so much love to yeah. you um, what a horrible thing to have to go through. And yeah, we do, talk, you know, life on the other side of illness is amazing in so many ways and has so many gifts and new gratitude and new focus on joy and all these really incredible things. Um, and I think when we tell these stories, we want to highlight that for people. Because if you're watching now and you're sick and you're suffering, we want to, you know, really show that you can get your life back and there's this, this beauty waiting for you. And that is all true. Um, but so is, so is all the other stuff. And, you know, I remember having a moment, like I, I used to picture recovery as this utopia because it was yeah. such a nightmare being sick. And yeah. I thought that once I'm healthy, I thought nothing else is going to matter. Cause you know, you do get this um, understanding appreciation that your health, uh, most of us, I think would say is the most important thing. Cause you can't be there for anyone else without that. So I think once I have my health, I can handle anything, which is true. I can handle anything, but it doesn't mean that it's easy yes. or that it's not incredibly stressful in the moment. Cause I, you know, I had, I remember having a moment thinking like, 
like in the pandemic and just when life just felt really kind of horrible. I'm like, I feel like my life is actually worse now than when I was sick. Like, this isn't what I was picturing. This isn't what was yeah. supposed to happen. Everything was supposed to be kind of easy once I got healthy again. Um, but yeah, it just... I'm guilty of that too. Yeah. I was like, well, it's going to be rainbows and butterflies and everything's going to be well. And, yeah. and, and that's just not life, right? Yeah. 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 But it is so true that you come through it. It's boot camp, growth boot camp for all of us. So you oh, come up yeah. with this, you're in a better place. So you might, when you face these hard things, and I always remind myself, because even though I've been through hard things and hard losses, I always think of still this illness as the biggest one. So whatever's going on, I'm like, I got past that. Yes. I'll get past this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like these challenges are also this seat for transformation in so, so many ways. Like I'm not the same person I was before I got sick. I like myself a lot more now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also not the same person I was, you know, before losing my dad. I'm, I'm, I'm different now, but I have grown so much. And I've also found more meaning in my life because of it. And so my dad inspired me to create, you know, this membership that I have called Haven. Um, to be able to give something to the community, a place where they can go to feel supported and seen and heard and um, all the things that I needed on my journey. And I'm also, you know, putting in resources for grief in there because I know that's missing from this community as well. Yeah. But my dad was the inspiration for that, you know, and my journey. So it's like everything that I went through that that I thought was going to just break me and ruin me, transformed me. And I took that, I found meaning in it. I'm like, this was not for nothing. No way. I'm going to make it mean something. And I have, and I am every day. And I think you can relate to that too, right? Absolutely. And I hear it time and time again in so many of the people that I interview. It's, um, yeah, it, it's horrible. But for the most part, people, you know, if you let this, it can be an incredible growth opportunity and you can come through so much better. You know, I just recently interviewed someone named Keelan. I can link it above. She was saying before my head just was a horrible place to be. Like it just being me, like I was just so hard on myself. I had so much anxiety and like it took coming through this illness and now her head is a really good place to be. And people come through with confidence and life in many ways can become easier. At least you were yes. more equipped to deal with things. So yeah, it's quite the journey. I'm curious <laughs> because you've been talking about the things that have helped. So you mentioned DNRS and working yep. with the nervous system. So what exactly does that or did that look like for you? What did that involve? Yeah. Sure. So when I first started uh, brain retraining with DNRS, it consisted of a series of rounds, like brain retraining rounds that I would do daily. And that would basically be, you know, interrupting this pattern, recognizing it's just my limbic system. Um, giving that limbic system a talk down and then going into a visualization. So visualization mm -hmm. was huge for me, uh, especially when I wasn't able to do much and I was in bed. And so I would do around three of those rounds a day and I would visualize, you know, really who I am, my true self, who I am under coping mechanisms, under you know, these behaviors under symptoms and sensations and labels and diagnoses, who I am. And I would see myself so clearly, I would, you know, engage all my five senses and, you know, I would just immerse myself and embody that experience. And it helped. Like I, a part of me started to believe it. And slowly with repetition, with time, things started to change. And throughout my day, aside from those rounds, I would interrupt these old thought patterns. I would be that curious observer. I would witness, oh, like the way I'm speaking. Am I talking about my symptoms all day? Or am I, what you, words am I using? Like I had to change all my sickness vocabulary. All of the diagnoses became fruit. So if I had to communicate something to my husband, like I have, uh, migraine was a melon, uh, pain was bananas, uh, you know, the stomach stuff was raspberries. I'm like, I have a melon today. Or my kids would be like, mommy's having a fruit salad. There's lots of fruits today. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and those were like little shifts that I had to do. And I also had to, you know, really focus on gratitude, hence my name, Your Grateful Guide. And every day, try and find a glimmer of gratitude for something. 
And um, that's kind of where it started. And I was I was consistent with it. And that's the key. A lot of people don't stay consistent with it. But I showed up in some way every day. It wasn't the same. It wasn't perfect. Um, I, I had to stop putting outrageous expectations on myself. But, it, you know, it was a process. But I had to do it in my way and show up in some way every day. And so that's pretty much what it looked like um, up until around a year and a half, I think. And at that point, I found Curable, which is amazing, uh, which was really helpful for me with migraine, the chronic migraine, um, because I didn't realize at the time it was repressed emotion and a lot of stuff underneath. And so I started journaling, you know, Curable, Nicole Sachs. Um, and I started to discover this whole other world and belief systems and all of these things that came up for me. And um, I was able to wire out, you know, the, the chronic pain pathways through exercises like that. Um, even just the act of journaling sometimes was enough for me to like stop a, a migraine in its tracks. And, uh, and, then, and then that's kind of where I also did, you know, I worked with a coach because I also needed guidance on this journey and she helped me work through some beliefs tapping EFT tapping was amazing and um, and then I incorporated the somatic tools so that bottom-up approach which um, really helped me cultivate a sense of safety in my body again you know feel like I was coming home because as someone who didn't want to be in her body for so many years um, it's it, also with a background in history with um, with you know uh, anorexia and bulimia when I was younger the body was was not a safe place to be in and you know, I was really at war with myself in many ways and so the somatic component really helped me connect and like love this this part of me and come home to it so that's basically what it what it looked like and and, and to this day like I treat my nervous system like I do any person I love and so I tend to it I give it what it needs I listen to it um, I do things that support it and, uh, you know, I feel like it's just as important as, you know, brushing your teeth in the morning or, or working out for the day. I think nervous system love and attention throughout your day is also helpful in this, you know, chaotic world. Yeah, so <laughs> that's about it. I'm wondering, did it take you a while to wrap your head around or find some acceptance with, I, I, I'm just thinking about the long list of diagnoses that you had. I mean, it really sh sounds like there should be no coming back from that. And it really sounds like your whole body is kind of broken or just, you know, in this state of disrepair that it will take 9,000 different interventions to fix. Yep. And it sounds like, I mean, mostly what helps you to recover was working, you know, the limbic system, the nervous system, um, you know, those neural pathways in the brain. So did it take you, what was it like thinking about that originally? that this yeah. could be something that gets you past this whole world of suffering that's happening in your entire body. Yeah, I mean, well, firstly, I had tried everything else before I got to brain retraining. So I okay. didn't mention that, but like any alternative therapy and also regular Western medicine, like I've done everything, like <laughs> everything you can think of from like shamans to acupuncture to crazy diets, everything. It was, it was the last thing I hadn't tried. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And I have, I was like, okay, there's got to be something to this because so many people are healing from it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to borrow their belief. So they healed, they went through it. I'm just going to borrow it until I can hold it for myself. And that's kind of how it started. So I wasn't fully believing in it yet. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. And I would say that most people, when they start, are not fully there yet. I had to build belief over time. And that started with borrowing from someone else. I think that's such an important point, because I've read and heard this a lot, you know, that, and I say this in my videos, and, and I, I believe it, but this, you know, this brain training is kind of a one-two punch, because part of it is understanding what's happening there, because you need to have that buy-in. Yep. Um, you know, if someone just, if you knew nothing about it, and someone just said, here's an exercise, do it, I'm not going to tell you how it works, or why it works, or where this comes from, I think you're going to have limited success with it. Yeah. But it's also important to know that that buy-in, that belief doesn't just happen. 
for some overnight. people, it happens really quick. Like I interviewed right. one guy and he read a book and it clicked and he went and he chopped down a tree. He's like, I get it now. I'm fine. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll link that video up here. Uh, awesome. A guy named Nick. He's amazing. But for most people, it takes time. And I've interviewed a few people who have said they started these programs not fully believing it. And it still worked. So it I think it's okay. Worked. And it's understandable and you know, totally um, natural to not on day one be like, okay, this is it. I found my answer, especially after yeah. trying 97 other things that didn't work, like pulling that hope out again and again is Yeah, And hard. that timing is everything too, right? So I remember, I yeah. remember two years before I found DNRS, I had a psychotherapist tell me about mind body syndrome and I literally told her to F off. I was so pissed <laughs> off. I... I wrote a complaint. I was like full on Karen mode, like, you know, typing my email, so angry. I'm like, how could she, how could you? And then when I found it, I was like, oh, she was right. Oh man, I feel bad for like sending that email. I should reach out to her. But anyhow, it's, it, and that's what it is. I wasn't ready to yeah. hear it. Yeah. And that's what I find a lot in, in people with chronic illness. We're just not ready yet, but one day we will be And that seed, that seed gets planted every time mm -hmm. we talk about it. Right. And we share. And so I think that's just the magic in sharing our journeys. Yeah. There, there's something in, in sales, in the world of sales, I think it's called the eighth refusal, but most people buy something after the eighth refusal. So you know, <laughs> keep at it because it takes people a while to come around yep. to thinking, okay, maybe, maybe this is for me. And so this, cause sometimes I feel a bit like, you know, I'm putting out so many videos that have the same message. Um, but I think sometimes it, it, it's good because sometimes people just aren't ready to hear it yet. Not saying that this is for everybody, but for the people that maybe aren't in a place yet where they're ready yeah. to consider it, or maybe one person that specific journey doesn't resonate, but someone else's will. So yeah, exactly. That, yeah. yeah. That's so really, keep, that's keep, real. Keep putting them out. <laughs> keep putting them out. <laughs> So what do you all, you do work to support other people now. You do all sorts of great stuff. What are you doing? Yeah. So um, I do one-to-one -one coaching. Um, I also do consultations for people looking to get into brain retraining and just not knowing where to start or if, you know, their situation hmm. um, is something that um, would be benefited by one of the programs out there. And um, more recently I launched my own membership. So I didn't create a program. What I wanted to create was just a, I call it a haven. It's a safe haven for those of us who are on this healing journey. And so it's like having a coach in your pocket. I, um, you know, wanted to just help people feel supported as they're healing. It can complement any program or protocol. And it has uh, basically everything you need to regulate your nervous system and they're real time tools. And so there's this awesome SOS folder, signals of safety where I have talk downs, like if you're in a moment and you're freaking out and there's symptoms or sensations, you know, you listen to those, there's pep talks, there's reminders, uh, have a whole section on tapping, like, you know, different sequences for healing, limit, healing beliefs, things that are keeping us stuck, um, different states, uh, have another section with guided visualizations for different states. I have vagus nerve and somatic tools and I have this awesome guided audio section where I have guided audios that were created by me that help you cultivate safety, connect with your inner child, release emotion, and um, you know just release that stored activation energy. And I also have brain retraining workshops included. So I did a really successful nervous uh, visualization masterclass last year that is still popular today. And I just did one on incremental training last week, which was amazing. Everybody loved it. So I have those and it's included as part of your membership. So if you're a member, you get access to these workshops and the, the, the recordings. I also have a faith section for those looking to wire in faith with neuroplasticity and just kind of, you know, tie that together. And um, I also am now working on a grief section. So um, as I'm noticing, that's missing from this community big time. And um, yeah, so I support people in Haven. So my Haven members have access to me through a private group where we chat and they ask questions. I'm going to be doing um, week uh, group coaching as well. And so like that's basically what I'm doing. And, you know, workshops. Uh, I love the workshops. I find them you know, it's really important to share the information and knowledge with people who aren't, you know, just Haven members, but everybody in this community, 
And um, so look out for those if you're following me on Instagram or um, one of, you know, any of the pages here, YouTube, uh, TikTok. But yes, uh, that's basically what I'm doing is it's really my my desire, my passion, my mission to help you feel supported in, you know, through this very difficult journey and to give you hope and encouragement. People always say like, you're a, you, you know, I pass out hope ropes wherever I go. And, and <laughs> that's, I like to, I like to see myself like that. You know, I'm the giver of hope ropes and um, because I needed one and someone gave it to me. And so I just paying it forward. Right. Um, so yeah, that's basically how I support people and by sharing content. <laughs> Amazing. And you'll see that on the screen here and also as always in the video description. So if you're watching this, just please take a moment to expand the video description and just take a look at some of what Vanessa has there because she's clearly been through it all. She gets it and um, you're just a beautiful person and putting so much great support out into the world. I just, Thank you. I just keep thinking like, oh my goodness, it's so incredible um, how much we have available now and just how little there used to be even just you know, 15 years ago when I first got sick, like there was just none of this. It's just, it's so amazing. You know, there's never a good time to get sick, um, but there is a better yeah. time and the better time is yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you're watching, there is so much hope. Oh my goodness. You know, keep searching, find what resonates. Um, and if something yeah. does jump on it, um, because yeah, there is, uh, people are getting better. So many people I've yeah. I think I've got a seven month wait list on this channel right now for recovery stories. I just, I can't wow. keep up. I need to like multiply myself or quit my day That's job. So, so I can, That's I hope to do so this full amazing. time eventually. And then we'll really start getting more yeah. of them out. But the point being that it's just so many people recovering um, from all different parts of the world, from all different sorts of different onsets and triggers and different symptoms and variety of diagnoses. Um, difficult like different levels of severity, different ages in life, different lengths of time they've been sick. I don't think there's any more because I get a lot of questions like, well, what about this? Have you had an instance of someone recovering with this? And there's just, yeah. there's, it's just all over the map. I, I don't I get those questions too. <laughs> I don't think there's a like, oh no, you're, you're screwed. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's just, I, I don't think that exists anymore with all the different and all the research that's happening. It's just, we know more and more every week. So um, yeah. yeah. And, and the excellent thing is that there's nothing special about me or you Yeah. at all. We just showed up in and showed up for ourselves daily in the way that we needed to. And and we recovered and we, you know, overcame. And so I want people to know that as well. Like I'm not special. I'm not magical. I have no extra powers or anything like that. We're just really ordinary people who do the work and show up and love ourselves enough to do that work. Yeah. I'm going to butcher a Beyonce quote here, but she says something like the most incredible thing I did was never give up. Like the key to her yes. success. You exactly. know? So it's just, it's tough, but keep finding that hope and um, keep picking yourself back up yeah. and keep at it because I know it can yeah. feel like things are never going to change, but sometimes they change really quite quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, I've shared this a lot, but I used to picture myself like in a forest and my illness was a forest and I just been walking through mm -hmm. it for an eternity and it felt like I was never going to give get out. And I think I just want to get up, give up. I just want to sit down and yeah. just like, this is where I live now. But then I think, you know, what if I zoomed out and I saw that I was only a few trees away from getting out? Like, what a yes, shame it would be yeah. to have given up right here. So I just like those visualizations you're talking yeah. about. It's just important to have them to help you picture where you're trying to go. Yeah, exactly. And I and I always yeah. say, I'm like, you didn't come this far just to come this far. Yeah, <laughs> that was a really important thing that I, I posted about it today. I'm yeah. like, no, nope, you didn't come this far just yeah. to stay here. Yeah, well right? said. Well, thank you so much, Vanessa. This has been so thank packed you. full of information. This has been so moving. Oh my goodness. I think all of us just need to take a breath and take a moment to process everything that you've shared because it's a lot, um, but I really appreciate um, you. I'm so happy for you, how you've come through this and so grateful that you are in this world out helping other people get past this too. Well, thank you. It's my absolute honor and pleasure, honestly, to share um, and just keep doing what you're doing because it's making a difference. And thank you to all of the people who are watching. You guys are making a difference. I read all of the comments. I don't have a chance to respond to all of them, um, but I just, we're such a beautiful community and you guys show up with so much love for one another, despite what you're going through. So thank you. And as always looking forward to your thoughts about all of this, please let us know in the comments, um, your experience and what's been working well for you. 
And I know this can be a lot to take in. So if you're not already signed up for my newsletter, I do put out every week the highlights of my recovery, recovery interviews like this one, because I know you can't see them all. So just right to your inbox, you'll get just bullet points, what worked, what didn't, key resources that got people that got people there. So there's a link in the video description if you want to sign up. So yeah, thank you again, Vanessa. Thank you again thank to you. all of you watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. And I hope to see you uh, in this next one.